Hi, and welcome to STEM Stories with Mr. Ewing. This is part four in a series about our brain. And we're going to be talking about neuroplasticity. You're probably thinking, Mr. Ewing, what the heck is neuroplasticity? So before we get started, what do you think neuroplasticity is? And I wonder what I like to do if I'm not sure what I know what a word is, I try to pull out a part that I might know. Neuroplasticity. What's your guess? So, what is neuroplasticity? So, if we break it apart, neuro is the prefix referencing our nervous system, so all the nerves in our body. Plasticity means it's easily shaped or molded. Think about the word plastic. It's actually in that part of the word. So if we put those together, neuroplasticity is the ease of molding your brain. Did you know you could mold your brain? What do you think it means to mold your brain? I'm not saying that you pull it out and you're gonna mold it like Play-Doh and make some figures or a car, or, you know, something. What does it mean have neuroplasticity. Take a moment and think about that. So, everybody wants a happy brain, all right? Not a huge fan of taking pictures that shows the brain having arms, legs, and eyes, because we all know that in real life, a brain isn't a separate part of our body. But we reference things like a happy brain. That means we're in a good space. But that doesn't mean all the time. And a happy brain, if you think about those rubber bands between the fingers, there's actually some stretch and give. And if you think about the brain, sort of like the way we work out a muscle, we can actually train our muscle to get bigger. Well, we can train our brain to be better. Now remember, a mu the brain is an organ, a muscle is a muscle, so don't confuse them but there is some plasticity to our brain. Now, if you ever heard someone say, oh, that's just the way my brain is, or I, my brain can't do that, or I've got a bad brain, those aren't true. Everybody has the same brain in their heads, it's just how we use it is different. Now, they're not all made equal, and they're not all the same, and I'm not gonna get into all that, but, we all have the brain in our head, and we can all work to use the neuroplasticity to change what our brain does. So, nobody actually has a bad brain. There's no such thing. It's like saying, that's a bad person. No, they've made bad choices, but they're not a bad person. Just like that, you don't have a bad brain. We talked about the amygdala way back, I think, in lesson two. Now, the amygdala being hijacked actually makes our brain do things that we don't want it to do. So we've got to use that neuroplasticity and the myelin that we learned about to actually re-get our brain working differently. So going back to the amygdala hijack, remember that fight or flight response or freeze? All right, well, that's because that's what the amygdala hijack, uh, our amygdala has learned to do. So we now have to use our neuroplasticity to actually reprogram, recreate the myelin to get back to a brain that's like, we're ready to go, right? But remember, does our brain have eyes? No. Does our brain have hands and feet? No. But it's just a picture. I'm not a huge fan, but it gets my point across that we've got a good working brain. And the better our brain is, the better we get away from the amygdala hijack, get away from that fight, flight, or freeze, we've got a brain that's gonna learn better. We've gotta get our brain to where it wants to learn more by creating more what? What's the thing that we wanna create more of? It's sort of like a fireman holding the hose. Do you remember? Myelin. And again, we're not going to put a hat on our brain that would go on top of our skull. But it goes back to creating 
more mylon on the axis, axon that is going to control our dendrites. Remember, when you've got the myelin sheath on there, it controls it like a fireman. When it's not, it's like the hose just going all over the place. And we don't want that. We want this myelin to start to develop so that we can learn more and learn more things. So remember, that's not a thing. Don't ever say, well, that's just the way my brain is. You can say, well, that's the way my brain is right now, but I'm working on growing more myelin and changing the amygdala so it won't get hijacked all the time. But you're doing that how? What is it about our brain that can be molded? Neuroplasticity. That is how we're going to make a stronger brain. Now remember, the brain's not a muscle, it doesn't lift weights, it doesn't have eyes and a mouth, and it doesn't wear red shoes. But we can make our brain stronger by using the neuroplasticity and developing new myelin. So we can change the way our brain works. Now, once myelin's created, we can't get rid of it. But we can develop new myelin that's actually stronger than the other myelin, and it overrides it. So once we've learned something, we can actually unlearn it and then relearn something. So if you've learned to go into amygdala hijack when you walk into school immediately to run, well, you have to unlearn that behavior. Know that when you walk into school, you've got to come up with a new path. That's going to be the relearning piece. That's because you have neuro neuroplasticity. You can relearn a behavior. You can change it. You are in control of changing that behavior. No one else. I can't do it for you. Your family can't do it for you. Teacher can't do it for you. You have to take what you learn, unlearn it, and then relearn it. Because of your neuroplasticity, you can do that, and you can change your amygdala hijack by using what material? Think about the fireman. I'm not going to tell you. Again, we learn something, it's like a puzzle. To unlearn it, we got to take that puzzle pieces, the puzzle pieces apart. And then we got to put them together kind of in a different pattern. But we can do it. You can do it. That's how we relearn something. So it's sort of like brain hypnosis. Do you know what hypnosis is? If you don't, look it up. But learn, re unlearn, and relearn is basically kind of like brain hypnosis. We're hypnotizing the brain to think something else. Now, we're not really hypnotizing your brain, but we can think about reprogramming, creating more myelin, because our neuroplasticity allows us to do it. Just because you've got something set into your brain doesn't mean you can't unlearn it. So I'm gonna give you some five easy steps how to do a brain hypnosis. All right, our first step, close your eyes. Take a deep breath in, hold it for two seconds, completely exhale it through the nose, trying to push out every drop of air in your lungs and smile as you do it. Step two, say out loud, I am safe, I am calm, I am love. You say this five times and smile between each time. Step three, keeping your eyes closed, think and picture of the happiest or funniest time that you can imagine for a minute. Step four, now say out loud and ask your brain, why am I so relaxed? Why am I so happy? And then take a minute to answer yourself. Why are you so relaxed now? Why are you so happy? And then step five, to hold this in your brain, repeat step one again. If you do this in a situation that you know that you're gonna go into amygdala hijack, you're using your neuroplasticity to create new myelin to override that old myelin that would have put you into amygdala hijack. I want you to try this. Find a situation that you know upsets you and use this 
brain hypnosis to change that so we can build a stronger brain. You've got this. You can do it. Neuroplasticity. It is the reason our brain is such an amazingly strong organ that does amazing things.